Andrew Hutchings here, not a licensed physician, not giving medical advice. It's purely educational and for entertainment. I don't remember if it was a year or two ago, but I made a video on how to uh, homebrew anabolic steroids. I'm not encouraging any illegal activity. Don't do it if it's illegal where you live. Check out that video if you're interested, search it, whatever. This is not about that, but uh, I had someone comment that uh, that procedure is not sterile. Okay, on the surface, that seems like a good point. If you are wholly ignorant of everything biology related, bio, well, if you're wholly ignorant of science, you would think that that's a valid point. Um, he's like, that procedure, it's not sterile, it's dangerous, blah, blah, blah. Um, I, I think I said in the comments, or maybe I made a follow-up video, that the only way to truly be sterile is to drop a nuclear bomb on something. I want to prove a point to you, but I'm going to go on to say something even more shocking afterwards. Say you got this syringe, and you are going to put some testosterone in it, let's say. Let's imagine you have perfectly sterile testosterone solution. Okay, so... You open up the syringe, you fill it with air, you know, you, you put alcohol on the top of your testosterone vial, and you put this through it. You inject the air, you turn it, and then you fill up the syringe. Okay, pa tell me now, write it in the comments before you watch. Or, uh, you don't need to write it, but think about this. Where did we break sterility? Because it's no longer sterile the second it's in this. Actually, it's not even sterile before it gets in the syringe. Okay. Number one, putting alcohol on the rubber part of the vial and pressing a needle through it is technically not sterile. It's good enough, but technically it's not sterile. Just like the person in the video was saying, oh, alcohol doesn't sterilize things, ball. It's like, technically you're right. Technically, when we put alcohol on the top of the vial and we press this needle through it, we just pressed bacteria and possibly virus, who knows, into the vial. Okay, next thing. Remember we filled the syringe with air? That air is not sterile. This air, not sterile at all. Very, very far from sterile, yet we fill this syringe with air and we inject it into the vial. That vial contains non-sterile air that is in contact with your testosterone solution or whatever your medication is. Now, typically a solution of testosterone is going to have a bacteriostatic or bactericidal agent, like benzyl benzoate, benzyl alcohol. But a lot of medications do not. Yet, the presence of non-sterile air is generally okay. So yeah, there is pretty much never gone. Arguably, there's never sterility in the medical world. Nothing is sterile. Uh, you do want to be as close to sterile as possible, but it's important to understand that humans do have an immune system and that nothing is sterile. So you just got an example of how every single time anyone has ever given any medication for the most part, it's not sterile. But I'm gonna take it a step further and I'm not saying this should ever happen. You should avoid, as well as you can, this happening. But I've seen people take very non-sterile injections. What do I mean by very not-sterile injections? I mean like, let's imagine the syringe sitting on a countertop for days. Just sitting there. And then somebody does an injection into their vein. and suffers no apparent health consequences. Or let's imagine they take some substance and mix it with water and they do not boil it or filter it or whatever and just inject it in. <laughs> now I'm sure a lot of the time it's not gonna work out well. It's gonna lead to some very severe health consequences. But I have seen that not lead to health consequences. I've seen all sorts of non-sterile interactions with the human body that 
ignorant people think are impossible, that it's impossible for these interactions with the human body to not result in serious illness. Yet the fact is that humans do have a very robust immune system. Once again, you should never leave us, you should never do something that is not very close to sterile. For example, leaving the syringe open on your countertop for a week and then injecting yourself. You should never do that. You should never take some tap water from your sink and just shove it in your vein. You should never do that. But it is possible that if it happened, you'd be okay, especially if you're a very healthy and young person. I've seen it, I've seen it with my own eyes. No one can tell me it's impossible. I've seen it many times. I would never want to do that with myself, but I've seen it. It doesn't, res it doesn't always result in catastrophic health consequences. So yeah, just to recap, nothing is sterile. Anytime you use a medication, you fill the syringe with non-sterile air, you put that air into the vial, that whole vial of medication is not sterile. It's very far from sterile. Now, it's very, it's very close to sterile, but it's also very far from sterile. It depends on your perspective. Uh, certainly a lot more sterile than using tap water or toilet water or river water, um, but it's not sterile. And that's okay. So I hope you enjoy this video. I hope it gives you a little perspective. Um, I hope it makes you a little less ignorant. Um, yeah, please like, subscribe, and comment. Check out my other videos. Check out my Instagram, Andre Hutch, A N D R E Y H U T C H. You can hire me there for training, consultations, coaching, plans, whatever. Same thing with diet, same thing with supplements, same thing with special supplements, which can be used very safely very beneficially to your health, but they can also be disastrous if you don't know what you're doing. And you're not gonna learn what to do watching a few YouTube videos for a few months. You're not even gonna learn what to do watching YouTube videos or reading articles for a year. I would say it takes about 10 years to really understand the human body. Now, if you wanted to hone in just on a certain substance, maybe you could learn it pretty well in three years. But in general, to become an expert who is capable of interacting with the human body in a beneficial manner without catastrophic consequences, I say it takes about 10 years. I have been studying the human body intensely for, I mean, technically I've been studying it for like 16, 15, 16 years, but I started with psychology Starting with when I started studying more biology and pharmacology, I've been studying the human body for 14 years. That's why I know what I'm doing, and I can inform, not advise, others on what can be done and the health ramifications of it, and how to minimize the health ramifications, and how to maximize the benefits. So yeah, do you really want to take the chance trying to learn in a few days, a few weeks, a few months, or do you think it's a better idea to hire someone that's been studying it intensely for 14 years? I think it's a better idea to hire someone that's been studying it intensely for 14 years. Just me, I don't like to uh, do things that can have severe consequences. If I can hire someone to just do it right and not have severe consequences, that's just me. Good luck.